Listen as Doug Fisher discusses how these lesson strategies improve literacy skills. In both math classrooms, we also got to see graphic organizers, vocabulary, writing, and thinking. Both teachers challenged their students to understand mathematics and the language associated with mathematics. Reading is important in mathematics. We read for information. But more than that, when we learn something, we learn it through reading and writing, speaking and listening. In Mr. Cox's classroom, he created a graphic organizer for his students. They had to explain the formula, how to use the formula, and provide examples of the formula in a way that helped them understand the relationships between and among the formulas. He also gave them vocabulary to use as they created that graphic organizer. One of the best things about his classroom was the visual displays of information, taking complex mathematical terms and formulas and showing students how they relate to one another. Mr. Roberts was an expert in vocabulary instruction. He taught his students specific terms necessary for mathematical thinking. He made connections between those words in mathematics and the everyday ways in which kids will use those words. For example, ellipses. He gives us an example of how the ellipse works in math and where else we might have heard that term in our own lives, making math personally connected to our everyday living experiences. Word problems are always a focus in mathematics. We always worry that our students won't be able to take the knowledge that they're gaining and answer a word problem. Part of the difficulties of word problem is the words. If you don't know how the words work and how they flow, you're never going to get the problem. So first, they have to have the vocabulary. Both teachers clearly taught the vocabulary. Second, you have to know how to set up a problem. We know many students set the problem up wrong and then do the math correct, but for the wrong problem. When we teach students to think through the problem by creating a graphic organizer and applying what they know from a graphic organizer to the formula of the math problem, they're more likely to set up the problem correctly. When they close and explain their thinking how they solved that problem in writing, we can identify where their thinking might have gone awry if they made a mistake. At the close of the lesson, Mr. Cox invites his students to write about their mathematical understandings. That writing prompt clarifies for students their understanding. It also provides Mr. Cox an opportunity to understand his students' thinking, to get in their minds, if you will, to look inside their brains and, and ask a question. Do they understand it? And can I move on? Or do I need to review? You have reached the end of the Literacy Strategies in Mathematics module in the Glencoe Professional Development in Mathematics series. Thank you for joining us.